Vauxhall's Astra is a household name and for decades now it's proven the ideal choice for families, couples and well everyone in between. Now there's an eighth generation car and this is a new Astra which hopes to tie in with Vauxhall's plans for electrification as well as bringing more space and technology to the market. So what's it like? Well today we're going to get behind the wheel to find out. It's fair to say that the Vauxhall Astra has arrived with a very dynamic look. It's got that visor front end which we've recently seen used on the new Grandland, while the split tone roof helps to make the car look lower and sleeker. Around the back, the boot hatch is now integrated into the Vauxhall badge, which is a really cool feature. Since Vauxhall is part of the wider Stellantis group, some aspects of the interior of the new Astra might be familiar to people who have spent time in cars like Citroen or DS. The switchgear area in particular is very similar to some of the newest Citroens. Elsewhere, we've got a nice combination of screens and physical buttons because Vauxhall say that they want to still make it easy for you to access those key functions like the heating and ventilation, which all have physical buttons and shortcuts here, and I think that's a really good feature. The screen itself is a nice twin display setup, so you've got a large virtual screen ahead of you and then the main infotainment in the middle. These cars do have a large section of black plastic in between the two screens on this particular specification of car, but Vauxhall has said that this is going to be available as one sweeping piece of glass soon, which I think looks a whole lot better. In terms of material quality, it's a mixture of good and bad, really. This gloss black plastic does give it a slightly more premium feel, but it attracts dust and fingerprints. And there's some scratchy plastics down on the side. However, we've got nice deep sections here for your phone or wallet keys. And down the side, the door bin's nice and deep for water bottles too. In the middle, there's a good holder down here, which is actually really deep again. So in terms of practicality, excellent. Material quality, slightly mixed. Now the rear seat area of the new Astra is a mixture of the good and the bad. I've got a decent amount of headroom here, despite there being a sunroof fitted, but taller passengers are gonna feel a little bit short changed and I find their heads brushing the top. Legroom is the real issue though. Now the seat is in my position and I'm around five foot 11 and my knees are quite tight here. I've got a good amount of room for my feet, but apart from that, it's quite restricted here. Now, luckily Vauxhall has carved some area out of the rear of the seats to give you some space for your knees, so that does help it, but it feels, well, it's quite small back here. In terms of seating arrangement, the middle seat is relatively wide and there's not too much of a transmission hump either, so you are gonna be able to get three people in here at a bit of a squeeze. And in the middle, there is a singular USB charging point. That does mean there might be some fights breaking about over who gets it. One of the big issues we found with the Astra, however, is that the door apertures, so how far and wide they open, it's quite limited. So you're gonna find it a bit of a struggle to load car seats in or even just larger items. So it's worth bearing that in mind. When it comes to boot space on the new Astra, we've got 422 litres to play with in the regular petrol and diesel versions. It's worth remembering that you get 70 litres less in the plug-in hybrid. Now, in terms of the actual space, it's nice and square with a low load lip, so it's easy to access. And there's a small amount of underfloor storage too. You can, of course, extend it by lowering the rear seats, which boosts that literage further. Before we start anything else, you might have noticed that I'm sat on the wrong side of the car. And that's because the dynamic cars that we're able to drive are German registered and as a result are left hand drive. So though you might have seen me looking and prodding around a right hand drive car, the ones that are allowed to drive are left hookers. This one in particular is the new plug-in hybrid Astra, which is undoubtedly one of the most interesting new features in the lineup of the Astra range. It takes a 1.6 litre petrol engine and combines it with an electric motor and a battery for 177 brake horsepower combined. Of course, one of the main focuses of a plug-in hybrid is efficiency. And in that sense, the Astra does quite well. Now, Vauxhall claims that you should be able to see up to 256 MPG, but that is reliant on the batteries being fully topped up and you driving pretty much everywhere on electric power alone. Having said that, the electric range is very impressive in the Astra and at 43 miles, it means that you're gonna be able to spend a lot of time running on the battery power alone. You can also drive up to 88 miles an hour on electric only power. So it's not just restricted to low speed roads, you'll be able to use the EV motor and the battery on the motorway. But what is it like to drive? Well, Vauxhall has worked hard to improve the levels of refinement in the car, and that's definitely noticeable. It's a quiet and it's a very refined place to sit. The only issue that we found during our time with the car is that because of the added weight of the electric motor and batteries, 
the ride has been firmed up in order to compensate. So when you do go over potholes and you do go over larger imperfections, the car does struggle to deal with them and you get quite a lot of rock and bounce coming through into the cabin. Having said that, the electromotor and the petrol engine work very harmoniously and the switch between the two isn't too detectable. In fact, you barely have to acknowledge that the car is a hybrid at all. You can leave it to its own devices and it sorts itself out. Given that it'll do 0 to 60 in 7.7 seconds, it's certainly got enough performance on tap to keep up with ordinary traffic and actually you get quite a lot of zip from that electric motor and when the two blend together the performance that you get from this Astra is actually very good. The steering is reasonably light but it is quite accurate and overall the visibility is good. These pillars up front are quite slim though I would say that the rearward visibility is a little bit narrowed because of that relatively slim screen. Now in terms of charging that battery it's going to be around about three and a bit hours if you are charging it as standard. However, you can get an upgraded in-car charger which allows you to accept a faster speed. That's an optional extra, so you will have to pay extra for it, but that drops the charging time to around about one and a half hours, which is excellent considering you then get 43 miles of range. Now, of course, plug-in hybrids usually come with a premium, and this one starts from around about 35,700 but that actually puts it in one of the most affordable segments of the plug-in hybrid area entirely, and it does undercut quite a number of its rivals. When you factor in the fuel cost savings that you're gonna be able to get as a result of that electric powertrain, or electric assistance, should I say, then it does seem like the plug-in hybrid is gonna be the pick of the bunch. All right, that low-speed ride is a little bit fidgety, and as we've mentioned already, there's a 70 litre deficit on the boot space, but I do think that's a worthwhile consideration to make and a sacrifice well worth making given the efficiency benefits that you get from this setup. Of course, that's not to say that the standard petrol or diesel Astra is not going to be worth looking at entirely. And for many people, that is still going to be the ideal choice of powertrain. But if you're doing shorter journeys or your commute is, say, 20 miles, I don't know why you wouldn't go for this car because it makes so much sense if you can run on electric power to from work you can charge up when you're at work perhaps and charge up when you're at home or even find a three pin socket that'll be able to do it in a reasonable enough time and the fuel cost savings are really there for the taking in this car so how do we sum up the new Vauxhall Astra well overall I think this is a really interesting proposition and I think that Vauxhall has done well to spark some new life into what is a very tried and tested segment. This plug-in hybrid feels like the one to go for given the saving costs that it brings and also the added benefit of some serious punch from the electric motor. The hatchback segment is obviously seriously contested but the new Astra arrives with a very generous level of equipment, a good standard of build quality and some really clean and efficient engines which means that I think it's still going to be one of the hard hitters of the segment in general.